Ted Haggard has always been a unique pastor who stood out from his peers with his casual clothing and non-conformist views. In 1985, he founded New Life in his basement, which later grew to become one of the largest congregations in the United States. As the president of the National Association of Evangelicals, he frequently diverged from the religious right's core beliefs, although he remained a prominent conservative Christian voice during the George W. Bush era. Despite his environmentalism and rejection of certain fundamentalist views, such as young earth creationism, he remained staunchly conservative. Still, even the skeptics were dumbfounded when, on the eve of the 2006 midterm elections, a Denver television station aired an interview with Mike Jones, revealing that Ted, under the alias Art from Kansas City, had purchased sex from him and that he'd helped Ted buy crystal meth over the course of a three-year affair. This is the story of the downfall of Pastor Ted Haggard and the multitude of scandal that mired his return to ministry. Ted Haggard and his wife Gail started St. James Church in Colorado Springs, their second church since their marriage in 1978. In 1984, Haggard moved to Colorado Springs after he claimed that he received a vision from God instructing him to establish a church in the heartland of American evangelism. The church started with just 22 people in the basement of his house and eventually grew to become New Life Church, one of the largest mega churches in America with a congregation of over 14,000 people. Haggard's popularity and influence also grew, and he became president of the National Association of Evangelicals, paying multiple visits to the White House during the George W. Bush administration. At the peak of his success, Haggard authored six books, founded the Christian Information Network, and served on numerous community and state boards. He was even named by Time Magazine as one of the 25 most influential evangelicals in America in 2005. Despite his non-conformist views on issues like young earth creationism and the environment, he held conservative beliefs about sex outside of marriage and homosexuality. Ted Haggard aggressively opposed homosexuality, often staking out gay bars and preaching to those who he believed were immoral. So we don't have to debate about what we should think about homosexual activity. It's written in the Bible. I think I know what you did last night. <laughs> if you send me a thousand dollars, I won't tell your wife. <laughs> if only he lived by the words he preached himself. He saw himself and his followers as soldiers in a religious war and urged them to physically block businesses that went against his beliefs, such as liquor stores and massage parlors. As the head of New Life Church and the National Association of Evangelicals, he promoted the sanctity of marriage as a union between a man and a woman. But that all ended in 2006, when he was accused of paying a male escort, Mike Jones, for sex and drugs over several years. Jones, who had advertised his services on a gay escort website, recognized Haggard as one of his clients and decided to go public with the story. Jones claimed that Haggard had used the name RT and had taken steps to conceal his identity, such as calling from a payphone and parking around the corner from Jones's home during their monthly meetings. Initially, Haggard denied the allegations, but Jones had saved voicemails that Haggard had left on his phone, which led to Haggard's confession. In his resignation letter to New Life, Haggard took full responsibility for his actions and admitted to being a deceiver and a liar. Haggard also implied that his wife Gail was to blame for his affair since it was her turning down an invitation to join him at a church event that led to his need for companionship. The audacity! He then texted a young volunteer from their church 
asking if he wanted to be godly or bad that night. When the young man arrived at his hotel room, Haggard performed intimate acts in front of him. The revelations destroyed Haggard's career almost overnight. He lost his position at New Life and had to leave Colorado. He and his family moved to Phoenix, where he took a job as an insurance salesman and attended therapy sessions to address his, quote, same-sex urges. After three weeks of eye movement desensitization and reprocessing, EMDR, Haggard was reported to be, quote, completely heterosexual by a member of his advisory committee. This has led to controversy from both gay rights activists and evangelicals, with the former taking offense at his belief that same-sex feelings can be counseled, while the latter are still angry about his past actions. But I stumbled upon this treasure that just cracked me up. Ted Haggard is completely heterosexual. Because I'm 100% heterosexual. Ted Haggard is completely heterosexual. Ted Haggard is completely heterosexual. Glory, how he blew ya. Once there was a preacher by the name of Ted Haggard who stumbled from the path, or you might even say staggered. He was one in a million, or more aptly, one in ten. <laughs> Some folks say he put the men in awe, man. Why did you say that you're completely heterosexual? I didn't say that. Tim Ralph said that, pastor of Larkspur Church. Since then, Haggard had been vague about his sexuality. Meanwhile, Gail Haggard, Ted's wife, ended her silence on the scandal in her new book, Why I Stayed, The Choices I Made in My Darkest Hour. She explained that she chose to stay by her husband's side despite his sexual deceit because she believed in fighting for her marriage, which had been seriously jeopardized. However, she also acknowledged that her husband's actions had challenged her values and beliefs and that the situation had been difficult for her. For the past decade, though, Ted kept a much lower profile. He began a new church, St. James Church, in Colorado Springs in 2010 and led it with relatively little public scrutiny ever since. In April 2022, he sold the building housing his church for nearly $2 million, supposedly shifting his focus to a new model of home-based churches. And that's the backdrop for a new story in which two members of St. James Church allege that Haggard is still making sexually inappropriate advances towards men, including one who was a minor at the time, and using drugs. One of Haggard's former colleagues, Reverend Kirk Sethman, expressed concerns that Haggard's new home ministry, which includes a children's and youth ministry room in the basement, may provide him with opportunities to pursue inappropriate actions with youths. The two young males who spoke out against Haggard alleged that he had taken them four-wheeling without shirts and touched their bodies beyond a typical shoulder squeeze. One of the young men, named Grant, had previously been promised hush money by Haggard and his new life board members after coming forward with allegations against Haggard. Grant ultimately decided to fight back and filed a lawsuit, during which he released phone call recordings between himself and Haggard. So you deleted all those text messages? Yes. Wow, and you didn't save them in any other form? I didn't save them. I don't have them saved to my computer. I don't have them saved. It was a different phone. I even have a new phone now. Yeah. Forgive the people that have wronged you. I've wronged you. Forgive me. If the church has wronged you, forgive it. While there are no allegations of sexual assault against Ted Haggard, the accusations are of inappropriate behavior, as well as illegal drug use. Reverend Kirk witnessed Haggard asking a church member to buy him meth in 2012. 
Sethman and a doctor confronted Haggard, who admitted to having the drugs and handed Sethman a briefcase, asking him to dispose of it. However, Sethman decided to open the briefcase and found a bag of meth, a used meth pipe, sex toys, a DVD with young males on the cover, and a credit card with Haggard's name on it. Sethman did not go to the police or inform other church members, as he believed he was protecting the young man, the church, and Haggard. In 2019, Sethman confronted Haggard and demanded that he come clean to the church and police about his past actions. Instead, Haggard called the police and described Sethman as a delusional madman who had cornered him in his church office. Despite these allegations, Haggard remains a Christian leader with access to young men, albeit in a smaller bubble than before. At this point, you have to wonder why anyone would trust him. Then again, his entire life has been a series of convincing people they should trust him, then letting them down in the worst possible ways.